Wow, not a bad spot to wake up, huh? Holy. Just in case we see some wildlife while we're driving down. Wanna be prepared, you know. Also, we're gonna talk about this lens in this episode. Don't worry. And I'm gonna figure out what the heck's going on with my hair. <laughs> Here's the sign. No trespassing. Don't go that way. But I don't understand why there's giant red arrow. And then there's the no the snowmobiles this way sign. And I'm just now reading the salmon glacier sign that I definitely missed yesterday. <laughs> Whoops. So the game plan today is to drive and see beautiful stuff. Same game plan as every day, pretty much. I might try to pause so I could edit some videos and catch up a little bit, but honestly, who knows where the day is gonna take us. Uh, the, today's word, by the way, I'm not revealing it yet. It'll come in time when we see something, insert word here, <laughs> but you'll have to stay tuned to find out. We're gonna talk more about that 100 to 500 lens as well. Thank you so much for the suggestion yesterday. You betcha. How it, you was guys it was great. It was great. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, so this is a rest area, a stop. Just, this is just a rest area stop on this drive. What a beaut. And wow, that's pretty neat. Those are both submitted by my friend Ryan. Those are what we're gonna use today. So you're gonna hear, what a beaut. And wow, that's neat, quite often. But seriously, what a beaut. A rest area, are you? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh... Leave it better than I found it here. Throw these away up there. Just to prove to you, that's where we just were. This is the bathroom.
What a beaut. Just another rest area stop. Look at this water. How cold is it? Oh, I could... Oh, I could shower in that. All right, so that makes for three grizzlies, five black bears, and a porcupine that I've seen while driving so far. And don't worry, I still wanna talk about the 100 to 500, the whole point of this video, the title and everything. I'm gonna to get to it, it's just that I've been driving so much and getting eaten alive by bugs anytime I try to pull over and do anything. So what my plan is, the scenery is getting a lot more epic. I'm hoping I can find a spot to pull over and shoot some nice sunset stuff and talk about the lens when I get a chance. So stay tuned, it's coming, don't worry. I was gonna film this outside, but as you can tell, uh, the flies are still really bad. So we're gonna have to film, we're gonna have to. I have tried to talk about this stupid thing all day. I wanted to talk to you about it while I was shooting something. I wanted to talk to you about it while I was just out at a nice park, like I, I have shown you shots earlier, but the bugs and the mosquitoes are so bad. I mean, you just watched that clip. I was outside for maybe 30 seconds for that. And I have a bite everywhere, pretty much all over. And I'm from Florida, so I'm used to it, but man, it's really bad. Anyways, I guess we're just gonna talk about it in the car. The whole point of this entire video was to explain how I bought a lens I can't afford. And if you watch my video on the monetization for this channel, you know that I can't afford this lens. Now, technically I have the money for it. So that's the difference of, do I have the money in my bank account to buy this? Yes. Do I, it's a, is it in my budget for this channel and what I do? Absolutely not. So how did I justify buying this lens? This trip, going to Alaska for three to four months, I was like, man, it is a disservice to myself to not have a lens that I can shoot wildlife on. I don't ever, I don't think I'll ever be a wildlife photographer. I don't claim to be one. They sit and wait for hours, sometimes days, tracking certain animals to get the shots. Really what I wanna do is just have it on hand in case something happens on the side of the road or those eagles, like the eagles that I saw two days ago. I think it was two days ago. It's all, it's all blurring together. Just things like that, just having the option to shoot it. And I felt like being up here, there's so much stuff that could happen that having that extra 200 to 500 because I already have a 70 to 200 would be a big deal. So that is the explanation on why I did it. One other thing was that I finally get to test out to see how it affects landscape photography. So I've never shot anything past 200 millimeters for landscape photography. And I've been curious what that 200 to 500 range does for compression, for moonrises or sunrises or sunsets or anything like that. So it'll be interesting to see that. And I can even tie that into a future video. Now, how did I afford buying the lens? Well, first of all, 
I bought it in Oregon, meaning I didn't pay sales tax. The lens was $2,900 US. And the cool thing about lenses, and especially this lens in general, is they have great resale value. This lens is hard to get still and sells like new or almost barely used for roughly $2,700 to $2,600. So that's only a loss of $200 or $300. So that is what I decided. I decided I'm gonna buy the lens and that I'm just gonna resell it when I'm done and that I'll probably lose about $400. Now, that's just a loss that I'm throwing to the wind, but not only is it something that I can learn from, it's also something that I'm going to just have on me. And it's a really big deal to have on me because if, if I didn't, there's gonna th be things that, that happen like grizzly bears or mooses or that porcupine earlier or the eagles from two episodes ago. Those are really important because I wouldn't be able to capture them and I know that I'd be like, ah oh, man, I really wish I had a lens to shoot some wildlife on. So I'm glad that I have it and I made that conscious decision that I'm like, I'm gonna spend this money and I'm gonna learn this focal range and I'm gonna have access to that for shooting wildlife in the future. So I hope that explains it and I hope that might give you an idea for the future for you. I will say if that if you're ever wanting to test a lens, let's say you're going on a trip for like a week, just rent it, it's gonna be cheaper. However, if you're doing what I'm doing, which is going somewhere for months on end, buy the lens and then just consider reselling it once you're done with it. A lot of the times lenses keep value for a long time. I mean, the appreciation on lenses is uh, pretty slow. So you could even, I could even keep this for a year if I wanted to and then sell it back. So anyways, that's how I afforded, kind of, but didn't afford the 100 to 500 RF lens. And uh, I'll probably in future episodes talk about a little bit more, what I like, what I don't like, but realistically, I'm never gonna do like a in-depth review just because it's a great lens and I just wanna shoot stuff with it. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I look at gear in the first place. Anyways, it is currently 10.40. The sun sets in 25 minutes here. The further north I get, uh, the later it sets. And I'm still about two, two and a half hours from Whitehorse and I'm exhausted. I've been driving for like 14 hours. So I'm gonna try to find a place to park and sleep or maybe we'll just try to shoot sunset. I'm not entirely sure. The light right now is really great, but there's not anything particularly that I see that I wanna shoot. But if there something happens or I do see something I'm gonna shoot, I will include you along the way. final place to park and sleep. I am absolutely exhausted. Literally didn't even eat today. I just snacked. I tried to pull over twice to make like a sandwich or something. And I was just getting eaten alive by bugs so much that I was miserable. The good news is I do think I actually got a shot with the 100 or 500 right as I was driving here. Uh, the road started to have some mist on it, fog on top of it from changing temperature. And there was just a perfect straight shot of the road. So I just parked on the side of the road, jumped out of the car and shot a shot at, at about 400 millimeters. And the conditions in terms of the color and it was catching on the fog really worked. So I'm gonna put that on the screen as soon as I'm done talking, but I'm about to pass out. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, as always, you can like it. If you love the video, consider subscribing. I will see you again tomorrow, later. And good night or good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you may be. Uh, good night for me. <laughs>